Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AxesTrader.com uh, weekend uh, wrap-up show. Um, absolutely crazy week. I think that's the best way of saying it. Okay, the, the noise that you're hearing above, if you're hearing any noise at all, it is raining crazy in New Jersey. Uh, so my, my office, my third floor office is, um, well, the third floor and the skylight is right above me. So if you hear sounds like there's bullets being shot. It's those are not bullets. Be, those are actually raindrops. That's how hard it's uh, raining on uh, New Jersey. But Ed, it's Sunday. Worst case scenario, what do we do? Watch football? Oh, dear God, no. So, hope everybody's uh, doing very, very well. Uh, hopefully, everybody had a good uh, weekend. Um, hopefully, everybody had a good week. Uh, earnings season, right? Earnings season is in full bloom. Okay, we started out, and again, I'm not talking about the caterpillars of the world or the McDonald's of the world. You know, I'm talking about from the beta side. This is what I trade. This is uh, my sweet spot. This is my world. The world could be crumbling around me. Um, if it's not Tesla, Netflix, Square, Roku, Amazon, Google, uh, Facebook, NVIDIA, Boeing, Alibaba, and, you know, shop and this, that, the other thing, it really doesn't concern me. Again, yes, once in a while, I'll take something that looks pretty good and good consolidation, but this is my world. And again, I've been saying this for for a long, long time. And if you've been following, and BYND, and we'll talk about that in a second, um, if you've been following just this YouTube channel uh, just for the last year, what's great about um, what's great about this platform, just the YouTube platform in general, nothing to do with me, um, you can really document your your thought process. And uh, a lot of traders always ask me, and I've, I've gotten this question as early as, I think it was Thursday or Friday, do I ever, you know, or have I ever kind of journaled my trades? And my answer to that was no, only because when I started out, nobody knew how to trade and we all got lucky. And that, that's just the reality. So it never kind of uh, got me in a situation of thought process to say, you know what? I should, you know, re review my trades and blah, 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 blah. As I got older, um, what I do once a month, I look at my sheets and anything that stands out on the wrong side, um, I really try to figure out what went wrong in that trade. But uh, again, what kind of goes well with this YouTube platform is you can keep um, a record of your development. And once a week, and again, for all you guys who don't know, we've been watching this just on a weekly basis, um, this video goes out Monday through Thursday, okay? Um, I put it out there to the weekend, you know, just again, just kind of get summarize what we've been doing, uh, kind of, you know, showing what the process is all about uh, and kind of getting you guys ready for the next day. But if you've been just been following along little by little, obviously everything starts with technical analysis. I think that's the most important part. Uh, for weeks and weeks and weeks, we've been talking about this 190.50s level, right, that the Qs needed to get over. Uh, and then we talked about as long as it stayed above the 190.50s level, it's going to be very, very bullish. you got to give the bull the benefit of the doubt. We started talking about last week how all these bullish signs that the market was just not going down uh, on uh, China news, Brezik news, and everything else in between. So that was bullish. And now we kind of wanted to see what happened next uh, into earnings. And, and earnings for beta started up, right? You had Netflix, again, wasn't good, okay? It wasn't good, or at least wasn't good for the market, okay? It wasn't good for uh, the price action of the market, and they, they, they started selling it off. Uh, Amazon came out with, you know, came out with their earnings, and I didn't think they were bad to begin with. When I looked at them on um, Thursday night, I said, wow, that's a pretty, pretty steep drop. Okay, I, you know, I get the whole Amazon web service and blah, 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 blah. I, I didn't think it was that horrible. But again, they sold it off, and that's fine. Okay, again, everybody knows Amazon is a beast, and come fourth quarter, uh, between Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and Christmas, and everything in between, it, it, this, they're fine, right? They're fine. The, the key is how were the rest of the market, macro-wise, going to um, absorb earnings, right? Were they going to be good? Were there any more signs of recession is here, recession is coming? How are the retailers doing? Everything else in between. Again, as a, as a trader, you can go on 3,000 other financial sites and you'll you know, you'll get that answer, okay? We are trying to speak from the trader's point of view. And the only the only 
company that I was still negative on, or at least the next stock I was negative on, was BYND. And I kept on saying was, well, we got a week, you know, we got a week left. We got a week left till expiration. We got a week left to expiration. You know, it should fill in that gap to 108. And if it fills in that gap to 108, we should see 100. We saw 100. We, we saw also 96. The point is, uh, what's great about a journey of any trader, and again, I do encourage this. And again, it's one of those things as do as I say, not as I do, even though I don't, and again, I'm doing this now 20 plus years, even though I don't sit there and actively write down every single trade in a journal and trying to analyze, I do at the end of the month look at my sheets. I do kind of encourage that looking at no matter how you trade, looking at your, um, you know, looking at your trading, trading again, don't look at the stocks that work, the, the stocks that work again, whether you're trading for a week or you're trading for 20 years, your, your process, whatever the case may be, you're expecting to make money. Okay, and if you're and if you're trading scared, that means you don't trust your process. But anybody, if you ask any trader who's been uh, doing this for at least seven to ten years, they'll tell you. And this is subconsciously; they might not say this out loud. They're expecting to make money. The problem is that doesn't happen, right? Doesn't doesn't always happen. So I'm always trying to encourage the trader to look at the trades that didn't work. What was you know what was the difference? What was the difference between the stock that you made some money on? What was the difference between the stock? That you lost some money on was there a catalyst involved was there a technical flaw in your in your um, uh, synopsis of the chart what was it there was there a reload buyer in the crowd reload seller in the crowd that you overstayed your welcome did you cheat on the entry did you overstay your welcome did you not correlate a 60 minute view with a five minute chart to see was there more supply were you buying the stock as the futures were tanking as you were shorting the stock as the futures were rallying all these things are pretty important. That's why I, I've, I've always said this, and I tweeted this out. I think um, I think it was yesterday. Uh, I, I tweeted this out that you know I can show you how to trade pivots within a week. You know, it, it's a pretty easy concept to understand. It's like any concept, okay? But it's going to take you seven to ten to fifteen years to really figure out and really grasp mentally what not to do. Okay. The easiest part is saying, all right, look at this. Here's the one, you know, here's the breakdown of B, Y, and D. If it breaks down 133, it should get down to 127. Well, why 27 day? Well, here's the linear regression line. Here's support. And the next candle comes and replaces that. It should get down to 108. Well, why is it 108? Well, here's the gap filled 108. So the easy part is showing anybody how to do anything, right? Easiest part. The hardest part is to figuring out and to really understanding and grasping the 3,000 other moving parts that makes trading so damn hard, okay? So when you're a trader and you're trading for a year, a year and a half, or two years, and you say, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Again, like we've said in previous videos, you don't need to get it. That's the whole point. You're not supposed to get it. Again, how do you compare yourself trading for a year, year and a half, two years, to somebody trading 10, 15, 20 years? You can't. They have been on that road already. They've gone through what you're going through. And again, the difference between you or them, somebody's trading for 10, 15, 20 years, but you trading 10, 15, 20 months is they know what not to do. You might be trading exactly the same stock at exactly the same time. And I promise you nine out of 10 times you will mess it up because again, and we've said this on previous videos and nausea, your mind is not to set up what the price action is telling you. And again, you're still emotionally connected to everything you do. That's why you're always upset when you sell too early. You're always upset when you sell too late. You're always upset when you miss a trade. You're always upset when you, um, you know, when you turn a winner into a loser. You're just always upset. You're never happy. You think you're happy. You love the idea of trading, everything that comes with it. But again, emotionally, you're unstable and, and your actions prove it because again, nine out of 10 times, the first thing out of your mouth, even subconsciously is, well, where's my stop? Again, these are all things. And again, technical analysis is phenomenal. Holding on to your capital is very, very important. But your first inclination of putting on a trade, and I bet you, and again, I, I haven't spoken to every trader out there, but I bet you anybody that you respect or follow or any of the case may be that's been doing this for a long time, I bet you their first thought process was, well, where the hell is this going to go, right? Their first process, the first thought is not, oh my God, where's my stop? Again, where's my stop is a subconscious, okay? It's a subconscious scream for help that you're not, um, trusting your process. And that's plain and simple. And the most important part, when you are a developing trader, okay, and you are putting yourself in a position to learn and succeed, again, your job is not to try to, you know, turn a social media fantasy into reality. Your job 
is to make it to year five. Your job is to make it to year seven. Hell, your job is to make it to year two. And the best way to do so is try to get as much screen time as possible. Again, it's not something new. We've been talking about this for years and years and years. But the most important part is just make it to the next day. That's it. It's, it sounds so simplistic. Wow, yeah, what's the big deal? Make it to the next day. Put yourself in a situation day by day by day, but slowly you're removing your emotions. Slowly you're adding uh, technical analysis. Slowly you're removing your opinion. And all you're doing every single day is subconsciously soaking up what the market's giving you. Watching level two, uh, order flow, even when you're not trading, looking at charts, having an opinion of the market, even if it's wrong, have an opinion in this market and doing everything possible to extend your shelf life. So that's kind of a little piece of advice. What I want to share with you guys, usually, usually I try to you know give some words of encouragement, try to put you guys in the, in the right frame of mind, new traders developing, because again, I've been through your shoes. I actually want to give you guys um, a play that we've been doing for years, okay, for absolute years. And um, it's something that works very, very well. Um, I mean, you saw it, I mean, if all you guys in the live webinar, you see this uh, constantly. Uh, and it works really, really well with high beta, with the cult stocks. Uh, Apple, Netflix, Amazon, Facebook, Roku, uh, Shopify, Apple, Square, you know, uh, Alibaba, uh, BYMD, and all that good stuff. Okay. And it's something that is, is, is pretty simplistic in nature. And I think that every trader, no matter uh, no matter what your level, okay, what your level uh, in this market is, just needs to at least to understand that it's available for you. It might not be available for you today, okay, being a trader uh, for one year or two years, whatever the case may be. And you'll see uh, in a few minutes the, the notes I wrote uh, in the private feed on Friday, especially regarding Tesla, especially regarding. Uh, Amazon it might not be for you at this juncture of your career, but for all you guys who are a little bit more uh, mature in the game, okay, and have been there for a little bit of time, this is something I've been doing for many, many years, and I kind of want to share with you guys, um, just to just to show you guys what's out there. So, what's a cold stock, right? A cold stock uh, means it's a stock that somebody loves really, 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 really a lot, or somebody hates it really, really, really a lot. So, ta -ta -ta -ta, let's talk about Tesla, right? So Tesla put in this massive move on, on Thursday, just an absolute massive move. Again, I'm not going to go into the whole Tesla earnings and all that stuff. Everybody knows I short, I love shorting this thing. I love buying this thing. For me, it doesn't make a difference if the company comes out with heroin in their glove compartment, uh, no steering wheel, three wheels, and the passenger seat missing. I don't care. Okay, Again, it's a trading vehicle for me. I buy it. I sell it. I, I don't care. Right? I don't care. It's not about opinion. It's about price action. So if you're still talking about Tesla's terrible, Tesla Q, okay, maybe it will be one day. I, I don't know. I'm not smart enough. Maybe it is. I, I don't know. Again, it's all about price action. But, but the name of the game is putting yourself in a position to trade the price action on your side, not against it. And one of the plays we've been doing for many, many years is kind of the second day. Like what happens next? So here's kind of the trade. Let's use Tesla as an example. And again, you could use this for Facebook and Apple and Amazon and anything in between. And this works uh, equally as good on the long side and this use equally on the, on the short side. And I'm going to give you two examples from Friday. Okay, two examples we had in the live webinar from Friday. Exactly the same play, exactly what we're doing. And here's the name of the game. So when you see a stock, let's just use Tesla as an example, put in a monster move, right? Let's just talk about it to the upside. Put in a monster move two, three, four times its average true range. I think Tesla was up like $40, $45, $50 on, on, on Thursday, okay? The next day, and again, this is pretty simplistic in nature, but the next day, if it opens up red, okay, if it opens up red, the play is to either buy it on 60 minute support or buy it red to green, okay, which basically means if the stock put up this really, really cartoonish like move, okay, you can see it, really, really big cartoonish like move, what you're looking, what the market is basically telling you that they held their gains, and again, if you look at Thursday's action, you know, Tesla pretty much held 90, 95% of its gains, which is incredibly bullish, which basically tells you in the bot, number one, the buyers are in control. And number two, it's telling you that uh, it's telling you that the sellers are comfortable. Okay. Again, you could have a lot of hate and the stock's about zero. And 
Okay. And the next day, and I said this on Thursday night's tweet, and I, and I, I wasn't referring to Tesla by name, but that's what I was referring to. And I basically said, if we can get any weakness, okay, if we can get any weakness in the market because of Amazon's earnings, it's going to be a gift. It's going to be an absolute gift. And what happened? Well, the markets you know, pulled in a little bit pre-market and Tesla opened up red. It was down like a couple of bucks. And the play was, right, here was, you know, let me you guys show you guys the feed. And the play was uh, dip buy into any rising 60-minute support, 294s or red to green. Okay, now again, I always talk about it from the technical point of view. Note, red to green is not a pivot. Okay, it's just momentum. It still needs to build above the 301.50, 302 to, rec to reclaim that and test the previous day's high, which was 305. And we, we know what happened with Tesla, right? We know what the 330, just an absolute crazy trade. Uh, definitely made my Friday, definitely made my weekend. A lot of guys did very, very well. But the point of this trade is very, very simplistic from the psychology point of view. You are getting, okay, you are getting what somebody was willing to pay Thursday night, after uh, Wednesday night after hours, Thursday morning pre-hours, and the majority of trading that followed in, in, this, in this area of flat line for hours and hours and hours, you are getting a discount, okay, just from the mental point, from the technical point of view. You are getting a discount to what those people were exchanging shares only four, five, six, eight, nine, twelve hours earlier. So you're getting that discount. And if you believe in the theory that stocks go from supply to supply and the demand to demand, then you know the rising 60 minute demand. Again, this is why I tell traders stop looking at that stupid one minute channel. Again, it might work for some. Just listen to me. If you're starting out and if I had a choice, again, to start out with the one minute channel, or the 60 minute channel, again, you could clearly see where the 60 minute support is. I thought, I, I thought we had a shot to get down to 294. It never got down to 294. It got down to uh, 296, which kind of sucked. But again, the stock was only down two and two and a half dollars after a big 40, 48, 49 dollar move. And unfortunately, it did not get down to this Bollinger Band that I wanted got down to 96 and what happened was it trapped. You ever guys hear me see, see me here or see me right on Twitter or stock twits, if stocks, if eager shorts, right? If she, eager shorts, late shorts get trapped at the bottom of the channel, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna feel the pain. And that's exactly what happened here, okay? People got stuck on the bottom of the channel. And again, if you believe in the theory that rising support matters, okay, and it kind of does, you can see why the stock held this area and started going higher. And once it took out red to green, and, and I'll, I'll tell you, this is one of the most uh, uh, aggressive moves, uh, and you guys in the live webinar, anybody who's, been, who's in the stock uh, kind of knows, my first $2 were literally, or first $1.75, were literally in about 30 to 40 seconds. That, that's how intense, how, how crazy it was. And the most important part of this from the psychology point of view is, now you understand, right? You understand why the stock moved how fast that it did. Because again, all those people that were trading the stock earlier for the last 10 hours, okay, they knew the fair value was at least at break even, right? And the break even is all this whole supply and demand coming up here. So the fact that you were able to possibly get this thing on a rising support was a gift. And once it got red to green and they cleaned up those sellers and we talked about that. 301.50, right? That 301.50, 302 level. Once it confirmed that, it, it went to 305, which is the previous day's high. And once it broke 305, went to 308. Again, all measured potential. And once it got above 308, it just, you know, you're, again, if you were short this thing, you were absolutely in God's hands. And if you look at the other side of that, if you look at the other side of the spectrum, it's exactly the same thing with the short side. Again, even though I wouldn't consider Twitter, right? One of these beta names, but it's still a cold stock, right? All of us are on Twitter, okay? We're on Twitter a lot, okay? And this is a hated name. This is a love name. And the complete opposite was on Twitter. Again, Twitter, again, if you look at Twitter's uh, daily chart, again, it came out with pretty crappy earnings. And again, they, they still just can't get it right. But again, came out with pretty crappy earnings, and the whole, you know, the stock literally went sideways, right? For, for hours and hours and hours and hours, literally went hours. Um, and the whole play was exactly the same thing, the complete opposite of uh, Tesla, okay? And green to red short, it gapped up like 20, 25 cents. And again, they said, no, this is not a pivot, it's just momentum. 
3050 needs to build below to confirm. And again, this was the complete opposite. Here was a, a situation where the stock gapped down more than two, three times its average true range, okay? And the next day, it tried to gap up, right? It tried to gap up and it just couldn't do it. It got rejected at supply, okay? It got rejected at supply, right? It got rejected as green line. If you follow this green line, it got rejected at supply. The same thing would be the complete opposite of buying it in demand. And once it went red to green, green to red, and it confirmed 3050, right? Here's the 3050 confirmation. It went right to the next support of 2992. Again, you can't compare Twitter to Tesla, right? You can't compare a 60, 70 cent move on a $30 stock versus a $20 move on a $300 stock. It's apples to oranges. But again, here's the proof that you don't need to trade a beta okay, to understand technical analysis, to understand how things work. So to kind of summarize this play, and I know, and I, again, I've been doing these plays for years, for absolute years. Here is the play. Anytime, again, just to kind of summarize, anytime a stock gaps up and puts in a massive move, average to range at least two, three times, or even gap down, but let's just talk about the gap up for, for, for a second. Um, anytime it gaps up, the next day, okay, the next day, there is a very, very high probability, okay, the stock will continue in that direction. And if you get a gap down, right, in a stock that made a massive, massive move, a cartoonish like candle, there's a very high probability that dip will get bought into 60 minute support. And you will see, right, you will see red to green at least once, okay, at least once. So it's a kind of a play that I wanted to share with you guys for, you know, for the weekend updates. I usually don't give you guys specific plays because it's all about the pivots and there's so many moving parts. But this is kind of a basic play that I think most traders, if you've been trading for a long, long time, especially during earnings season, um, it's something that can really, really help you out. And again, it doesn't take a lot of time to research. Like you kind of know, like, like, you know, just an example, like for, for Intel, right? For Intel for, for, for Monday session, right? Had a big, big move. Now, again, is Intel going to be something that I'm going to play on Monday? You know, it all depends. I guess it all depends, but you can see, right? You see the last time it held rising support, right? Right. Rising support move. Right. So if Intel gaps down tomorrow and it goes into this rising support, and again, this this channel will rise tomorrow. So it'll be a little bit different price of 55. There will be this will be at least a high probability area, especially if you're an options trader to get long the stock. And again, look where all the just keep this in mind. Look where all the action is taking place in the last Remember, These are all hourly candles. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours of data. OK, so if you're buying stock down here, OK, if the, the stock uh, decides to open up lower, you're getting a major discount where exchange of shares fair value for the last 10 hours occurred. And once it goes red to green, you know, you can get a very big move. So hopefully uh, that helped you guys. Uh, it's it's a pretty simplistic trade uh, just to kind of understand, okay, just because it's almost like a mom it's almost like what everybody talks about red to green. It is red to green, but in this specific group, your Amazons, your Facebooks, you, you know, Tesla's beyond they're very highly probable because again, sellers are very comfortable at very, very prices. And if you trade better, you kind of understand uh, where I'm coming from. So I want to kind of share you uh, with the guys with this, with this for you guys, obviously it works for catalyst earnings, um, earnings uh, upgrades are good too. Upgrades are also good. So for, for example, if you see Roku up like $15 one day and the next day it opens up like dollar, down dollar, dollar and a half, $2, you try, you want to try to buy it on 60 minute support or uh, red to green. So uh, Friday, uh, again, Fridays have been, just ridiculous, just absolutely ridiculous. Um, yeah, I mean, again, there, there is no, I mean, there is no, you know, there's no editing here. This is, you know, this is what it is. This is, this is our, this is our private Twitter feed. Some stuff doesn't make it here uh, because it's so fast. We do it in the live webinar, but you know, this was the, the watch list from the night before. Uh, this, this is everything in the feed. Again, there's no editing. There's no omitting. This is, this is where the pivots are. The same stocks over and over and over again. And again, I, I don't need any excitement in my life. These are the stocks. Sometimes they get exciting. And those are the days you kind of want to trade a little bit smaller size. But this is what we trade every single day. And if you do trade uh, beta, if you do trade uh, these stocks, I mean, it's a pretty good way to navigating the market. So let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about it. Uh, again, just an absolute sick day. Uh, Square, uh, 6180, 62 needs to build. Uh, here is Square. Um, all right. So here's the pre-market, right? Here's the pre-market supply. Uh, 61.77. Again, once it started building, 61.80. 
uh, 62, just this, you know, stock length. Again, not a huge move, only ran up a dollar. But again, is anybody out there? Raise your hand if anybody out there would turn down a dollar, right? Not, not so much. Uh, so Square was really big. Again, Tesla was the monster. I mean, just a I mean, monster. There's nothing really to say. Uh, dip buy again, rising 60 minute support, 294s or red to green. Note, red to green is not a pivot, just momentum. 301, once it started pivoting above 3050, 302, uh, it ran to 305. It rested there around, around the 306 area. And then 306 to 308 after hour was high as it was just lost its mind. Uh, Roku is actually pretty good. Um, I scalped the Roku a little bit later in the day uh, for some cash flow above this 132. I actually did the remount. I missed actually the first move from 32 the 3260s. Uh, I actually did the remount when it came back in. So I bought the 32s. Um, you know, spiked up, nice little spike. I actually like it. I still like it. Um, so the 32s, I just want to show you guys on the daily chart why the 32s were good. Uh, it stopped at 131.87 uh, for two days in a row. Right? If you can see here, here uh, 131.87 was the high, 131.88 was the high. So once it started getting above the 32 and building, uh, I still like it. I think this thing goes to 36, but it ran up to like 34 and change. So beautiful move on Roku. Uh, Net, again, and I say this all the time, you don't need to trade with me to trade beta. Okay, We try to give as many stocks as possible for all you guys who trade non-beta. Again, am I going to trade them? No, probably not. Again, I don't need them. It's just not what I do. It's just for me, it's a little bit too slow. But again, who am I to say what, what you should trade? Again, it's a pivot is a pivot, a pivot. It doesn't make a difference if it's a $16 stock, if it's Tesla or, or anything in between. If technical analysis confirms, it confirms. And um, you know, here is net. Uh, we talked about that $16, right? $16 area if it reclaims. Again, is it the biggest move in the world? No, it went to $16.30. Uh, there was some $17.50 November uh, calls being traded. And again, whatever you feel comfortable. It's not about what I feel comfortable. I feel comfortable with everything. It's what you feel comfortable. So net, uh, nice move on net. Uh, Netflix obviously never got to the $268.50 uh, area. Uh, we talked about beyond and, you know, look, earnings are tomorrow. Lockup is on Tuesday. I don't know. We're going to leave it at that, right? We're going to leave it at that. 96 becomes uh, 96 becomes the next line in the sand. Uh, if anybody who's been you know, just watching me and just, just trading with me for the last two months, every day, every day. So it actually held up the previous day. And I said, hey, I feel kind of dirty putting this channel, but if it starts building over 104, you know, you could get a trade. And again, it never triggered, obviously. But here's what I was looking at. Just to give you an example, uh, here's what I was kind of looking at here. If you look at this whole channel here, the top of this channel here was 103.70. So I felt that, well, you know, if it takes out 104, maybe you can go. And again, people know, you know, people know what's about to happen. So you can see this 96 level. Uh, they do come out with earnings and lock up is the next day. So I, again, gun to my head, I think this thing's going to see in the, in the 70s. Uh, but again, who the hell knows? It doesn't make a difference if I'm wrong. I'm not taking into earnings, so what's the difference? Um, so, but again, it is what it is. Uh, that never triggered. Amazon was huge, absolutely huge, um, huge, just absolutely huge. Again, I didn't think, I didn't think for a second that the earnings were that bad. And, and again, I said 1689, uh, big area. If it builds, it can go. I go experience traders up. Again, this is the point of not every single trader uh, trade is for every single person. I said if you are trading less than three years, don't even look at. It. Right? Don't even look at it. I traded the previous day Tesla. I traded it to the downside three times in the day it came out earnings and once to the long side. And I said, if you thought Tesla was nuts, well, this will be the nut house. Okay, so if you are, if you were an experienced trader and you take this trade and you miss this move, it's okay. You're supposed to miss this move. You're supposed to not even look at the stock, and that's the whole point of developing in your own time. So Amazon, this was a monster move. Uh, 1689, big area. If it if it can build, it can go. Um, yeah. So here was Amazon. Here was Amazon, right? Here was Amazon. Here was a 1689, right? Everybody see it? It was the highest area into supply. Again, this is what we talk about uh, in, in all the workshops, supply getting taken out. And this thing just went absolutely nuts, just absolutely nuts. Uh, it went as high as to like 1760s. You know, the news came out when Microsoft on uh, after the, after the, I think it was the just, I think it was the government giving a big contract to Microsoft, not Amazon. I think that contract will be bought. Uh, once it confirms this channel higher, I, there's a shot it goes to 1800. If it confirms this channel here going into, into, into Monday or even this week, I think the stock goes higher. But huge move on Amazon. Again, Twitter, like I said, the same thing opposite of Tesla. Uh, green to red on watch. Note, this is not a pivot, just momentum. 3050 needs to build. So, you know, here was Twitter, right? Here was Twitter. 
you can just see it. Just, just here's Twitter. You know, went green to red, and stock went to the 2990s. So huge move everywhere. I mean, this is just one after another after another. LRCX, I wasn't even looking at. I looked up. It was like 370. Again, here's the same trade as uh, Tesla, right? Here's a stock that uh, here's a stock that gapped up, right? It gapped up. It opened up a little bit lower and went red to green, put up a $4 candle. It's the same play. We just discussed uh, five, 10 minutes ago, 266 build. Uh, Allergan, I wasn't even watching Allergan. Uh, Allergan, 252. No, I still like it there. Uh, 252, I still like it for next week. Um, uh, Amazon take on the way up. Twitter, bingo. Amazon fire. Tesla. Tesla, what are you going to say? Twitter and lows, holy shit. And, and when I said holy shit, I meant that in the nicest way because the, the aggressive nature, and I was basically saying holy shit to Amazon and, and, and Tesla, the, the aggressive nature was was so exaggerated on Friday that you really, you really needed to be an experienced trader to really appreciate that. You don't experience what actually happened on Friday if you've been trading for a year or two years. These are just, you know, for you guys, it was just like a day that, wow, things are really, really nuts. For anybody who's been trading for 10 years, we really appreciate these type of days because you don't get them all the time, okay? Yeah, you might get your $2 move on Tesla, your $3 move on Tesla, maybe a $5 move on Tesla, but you don't see something $30, $20, $70 in two days. It's just it's just amazing, amazing uh, action. And uh, again, Fridays have been just an absolute godsend, knock on wood, uh, and hopefully uh, we can get something uh, really, really good. Again, going into this new week, uh, again, you got to be bullish like we talked about last week. Uh, the Qs are, the last stop of the Qs are 95.55, which are closed over. So you have a measured init initial move to the 96.62 uh, level before uh, an initial rejection. So again, hopefully my little tip uh, helped you guys, gave you guys kind of another uh, bullet in your uh, arsenal. Okay, if you are deciding to join us, uh, Live webinar starts up uh, at nine o'clock Eastern time, morning strategy, all that good stuff. And the Twitter feed sparks up probably about uh, five, 10 minutes before that, starting inputting pivots in there. So guys, God bless. Have a great remainder of your Sunday. And with God's help, uh, we'll see each other again soon. Take care, guys. Have a great weekend. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today.